It's a testimony to human resiliency. In an average lifetime, the heart beats more than two and a half billion times without ever stopping to rest. This amazing figure is bound to increase as we continue to live longer. But living longer sometimes has a price. Aging hearts, especially those weakened by heart attacks, high blood pressure, or other conditions, are more prone to a disease called heart failure. Hi, I'm Dr. Arthur Feldman, president of the Heart Failure Society of America. I'll be your host today as we learn more about heart failure, what it is, and how to live with it. Heart failure is the only major cardiovascular disease that's on the rise. It affects nearly 5 million people in the United States, and many people don't even know they have it because its symptoms are often mistaken for signs of getting older. Despite the way it sounds, heart failure does not mean that the heart has suddenly stopped working. Heart failure develops when the heart's muscle becomes weakened and after it is injured from a heart attack or high blood pressure or some other disease. The weakened heart muscle then has to work harder to keep blood flowing through the body. Heart failure does not develop overnight. It's a progressive disease that starts slowly and gets worse over time. The good news is that early diagnosis and newer treatments are allowing many people with heart failure to continue to enjoy their everyday activities and to live longer. In this video, we'll meet some of the people who are living with heart failure. We'll help you recognize the symptoms, we'll talk about healthy lifestyle changes, and we'll talk about the treatment of heart failure. I can play ball with my grandson at times, play with my grandchildren, enjoy them more. And um, there are other activities I did in the community and all my boards I'm on, I restarted and I'm doing a great job with them. What are the symptoms of heart failure? They include shortness of breath, which can happen even during mild activities, such as golfing or pushing a grocery cart. Some patients even wake up suddenly from sleep, feeling the need to catch their breath. Weight gain and swelling in the legs and ankles from fluid retention, and general fatigue and weakness. You may have heard the term congestive heart failure. This means the same as heart failure. We use the term congestion when fluid builds up in various parts of the body, such as the lungs, feet, legs, and the belly. However, it's important to remember that heart failure does not go away when this congestion is treated. So many doctors drop the term congestive and simply call it heart failure. How does the heart failure affect the body? In a healthy heart, blood is efficiently pumped through the heart into the lungs where it picks up oxygen. The blood then returns to the heart before being pumped back into the body. In a damaged heart, the heart muscle does not pump as well, so less blood moves through the heart. Blood can then back up in the veins leading to the heart, and pressure can force blood into other parts of the body, including the lungs and the legs. In a valiant effort to keep the same amount of blood moving through the body, the heart chambers stretch and enlarge. The heart muscle now has to work harder and harder to keep blood moving through the body. As this enlarged muscle tires and becomes weaker, the disease gets worse. This worsening over time is often referred to as disease progression. My life changed dramatically because I had been, of course, very active. I wasn't allowed to drive. I couldn't do any of my own housework. I couldn't vacuum or clean. I, uh, of course, uh, had great difficulty climbing steps. I was feeling, I just didn't have the, the, the I couldn't put in a full eight hours, let's put it that way. I was living the life of a semi-invalid. I didn't really have any pain, but I had no energy, too. And I couldn't do most of the things I had done before when I led a very active life. I just woke up one morning and I said, you know, I'm short of breath, and I don't know why. And my initial thought was, I probably need to start jogging. I need to start lifting weights, get my exercise level up, and I'll be all right. I didn't really think he was sick initially when we went to the doctor. Uh, he had just been complaining a couple of weeks of uh, feeling tired. I attributed that to his long hours of work. Many of you might now be asking, how do I know if I or someone close to me is at risk for heart failure? 
Some of the risk factors for heart failure include high blood pressure, heart attack, diabetes, or damage to the heart valve. And of course, you should speak to your doctor if you experience any of the symptoms we mentioned earlier, such as fluid retention, shortness of breath, or general fatigue and weakness. Frank Thomas Sr. had three strikes against him, high blood pressure, heart attack, and diabetes. His heart failure kept him from celebrating the success of his son, Major Leaguer Frank Thomas Jr. It restricted me from a lot of activities, mainly my son's game. The White Sox games, I, I used to live and die by them. And I just tell you, it hurt me when I couldn't be as active, you know, as I was before. Physicians often order a number of tests when exploring a possible diagnosis of heart failure. Many of them are painless and simple. The most important of these tests is an echocardiogram. This test allows your doctor to know what your ejection fraction is. The ejection fraction is a measurement of how well your heart is pumping. People with a healthy heart have an ejection fraction of about 65%. People with heart failure usually have an ejection fraction of 40% or less. So you can see it's really important to see your doctor if you think you may be at risk for heart failure. The earlier your doctor detects heart failure, the better, because there are treatments available that can help slow down how fast heart failure progresses. Successful treatment is very um, keyed in on empowering the patient, giving them control. In most cases, um, heart failure is a very progressive disease. But if patients take control and um, feel like they have control of what's happening to them, they can be much more successful um, in initiating some of these new therapies. Newer approaches to managing heart failure can actually help your heart stay strong. Remember, the goal of therapy today is to slow the progression of heart failure, to keep you active, doing the things you like to do. When your doctor starts you on therapy, it's important that you play an active role in managing your condition. Weighing yourself every morning is a vital part of managing heart failure. An increase of two or three pounds is a sign of water retention, an important signal to your doctor. You'll also need to watch your diet, particularly your salt intake. Eating too much salt causes the body to retain water, making the heart work even harder. It's important to put down the salt shaker and cut down on processed foods. This is going to require a lifestyle change to some extent. You're going to have to change the, if you've had habits of eating incorrect foods, you're going to have to change that. Uh, if you've had habits of not eating vegetables and, and, and good, to clean type foods, you're going to have to change that. Regular exercise will also keep your heart healthy. People with heart failure need to work with their doctor to determine an appropriate exercise program but it's still basically up to the individual to uh, watch your lifestyle and what you eat and uh, get proper rest. A critical part of heart failure therapy will involve taking medication. Experts now recommend a three or four drug combination to treat heart failure. That's why it's important for you to speak with your doctor about these important treatment options which can help you. Now that we've discussed what heart failure is, let's take a few moments to hear from some people who are currently being treated for heart failure. I, the activities that I had abandoned, I was able to do them again. I do, I fish. I'm active in the community and different boards. In the church, I'm active. And all these things I couldn't do before. I had uh, more energy and uh, became much more hopeful. And one of the things that uh, I've always been uh, an affinity for a clean house, and so I was able to wash my mirrors and my windows, and of course I was able to vacuum, and that enabled my son to not have to come and vacuum for me all the time. She became involved uh, in her everyday life activities again. Well, I can do more things. I can go out for longer periods of time. I can go to a theater or occasionally a movie or a museum, which I couldn't do at first, but I can now. There's a lot of good news for people living with heart failure. Won't go away entirely, but you and your doctor can work together to help you continue to enjoy the things you like to do. Remember, living with heart failure begins with you. So make sure you check out any symptoms you or a family member may have with your doctor. 
make the lifestyle changes needed to live with this condition, and make sure you receive the best treatment possible. When I was first told I had heart failure, I was rather depressed about it. But since then, I'm much more positive, and I'm doing all the things that I used to do, and life looks generally nicer. You know, in the time that we're living in, there's not too many things that, that uh, doctors or scientists can find soon enough to help you. It, it makes me ecstatic, very happy to know that he can be helped now. I feel like I'm still gonna get better and better. Heart failure for many patients is an intimidating and scary diagnosis. However, there's never been a more hopeful time for the treatment of heart failure. In fact, patients who a decade ago had little hope can now look to a bright future with modern medication. Thank you for joining me today. We hope you learned a lot and encourage you to speak with a doctor if you or a family member may be at risk for heart failure.